He looks like an no. abused child. <laughs> he sits like an abused child, bro. bro. And this looks like you beat his ass on the way to the park, and you're like, listen, I'll get you this. You just don't tell your mom I did that. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, you're saying Mike does that? Yeah. So Logan, how, who, who, who'd, you, who'd you wrestle this week? <laughs> you know, a couple good right hands. <laughs> Do you, f Tana? <clears throat> Welcome back, guys. I am very excited. Uh, I've never had a felon on my podcast before. I've never had never. a thug on my podcast before. Oh yeah. I, I've wait. Hold on. No, Tommy. He's here. Look at my guard dog. He knew. He saw him, and he's barking because he's alerted. Stranger, danger. Yep. Mm -hmm. Stranger, danger. Stranger, danger. Um, welcome back, guys. If you are new, T Tommy, shut up. Hey, that wasn't very smooth. Shut up, Tommy. We're trying to do. I was trying to do like a this cool could have been starting. A lot smoother. Oh, What's up, brother? Steven, Good to see you. Steven, could you just sit right here? Good to see you. Good to see oh, you. Good to see you. Sorry, I'm attached. Hi, you wanted to do like you? a an good intro good. before they got here, but we should just. Oh, I give you the whole thing. Oh, you're sponsored <laughs> by Celsius over here? Oh, <laughs> hey, bro. We'll get into it. Oh, did you just buy one? We just bought one in this part of the Get out of here. No way. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, go get stash? your money back, bro. We have a buttload of Celsius here. I'm actually glad you brought that up, bro. Uh, so Davidge the right there, that brown guy that looks like he plays on Fortnite or is a Fortnite character. Could you, could you show them what he looks like? He looks like a guy you would play in Fortnite. Hold on. <laughs> I've been talking to the Vidge on the phone every day for a year, and we've never met in person. No way. No way. I swear. No, no, nah, nah, you've here. met. You've met. Can you come here? You've me? never met each other in real life? Can we have a slow motion hug? No, no, no. You're joking. Bro, can I say what's up to the Vidge? Come here. Could you do it on camera? Come here. Can you do it on camera? What are you doing, bro? You this is so cute. Here? This is like reuniting family. My man. What's going on? Wait, you, are you fucking with me, guys? Or are you you honestly have never met? <laughs> well, it's great. Well, you know what I look huh? like and stuff. Yes, yeah, so But I've so never, good. I've I've heard you were on the show. Can I say it? Yeah. The show you were on with Nikki. Yeah. yeah. Fuckboy Island. Yeah. <laughs> he was one of the fuckboys. Yeah. yeah. But since that's then, my made, manager, baby. <laughs> <laughs> since then, man, he's made me tons of money over the past. That's a new flavor right there, yep. my friend. What's going on with this? Is it, are you beefing with Logan? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Celsius is my favorite drink. So when he told me, he goes, do a wish list of your favorite drink every day. I go to this Walgreens that you just bought yours. No way. Every single day, I wake up, I grab a Celsius, and I start my day. Bro, I'm pumped to be here. I've been wanting to come on the show since it started, since you left Impulsive and started this alliance over I, here. I actually try to yeah. get you as a co-host, but I sleep with this one, so it's kind of nice. Beat oh, you to it, sorry. Nice. So you're, <laughs> you guys are permanent <laughs> co host Okay, and relationship? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You Why? Are so you trying weird. to like... Cool. No, though, it's, I've never seen like a, a couple do a podcast besides that one older couple that's been married for a long time. I comedian. feel like there's a lot of podcast. What are you doing? Why do you have a sketchbook like that? You look like a kid that just hopped like off the short bus. he's a child and he's like waiting to show us his work, you know? Oh, is that too dark? No, it's Jeff and you. That's fine. I, I have to pee really bad. You do? Hold yeah. it. <laughs> Thank you. Man. Thank you so much. Can we can we give him yeah, a mic? Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just un uh, you're gonna have to hold it too. You're gonna hold the mic and hold your bladder. Okay. He's used to it. That's how we treat him over there, at Jeff. FM. You know what? Go to the bathroom. There's you're gonna be he's, treated well here. He's actually <laughs> go over there. I'll wait for him to come back. But he is the George of Jeff FM. First of all, if, unless you're saying the charming, funny, and only talented one, then <laughs> no, I agree with you. saying the guy we put in the corner. We have to turn <laughs> the other way to look at him. So when he talks, it's like, wait, wait, was that somebody over there? <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal bro, with that? With bro, that I fucking tell them all the time. I go, yo, like, you, like, move me, bro. Move me. Yeah. It is so hard. It's so easy to disrespect somebody by just putting their back because they're all, <laughs> let's face it, all the guests are here to just stroke Logan's ego the whole time. Uh -huh. They're just like, yeah, and Logan, some other co hosts. You're are killing too. it, bro. Some, some no, other, he just other... eats cheeseburgers, bro. No one's bragging on Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you said to stroke, they're there to stroke Logan's ego. Oh, you're saying Mike does that. Yeah, so Logan, how, who, who, who'd, you, who'd you wrestle this week? <laughs> Talk about this big guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love my freaking friends. They're, and you listen, I don't think they would ever be able to handle that seat, so I'll fucking handle that seat, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mike would make a whole big thing over there. Be, oh, 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 no, Mike. no, he did it for one episode and complained. He goes, really? you know, Daddy Mike, D Daddy Logan, I can't, I can't do it. And so yeah. he bro, Is you it know that video where he's like, you're the best. No. What? What? Mike? He's the best. He's a real you, workhorse. Is it cringe? Is oh, it, my God. Is it Mike? God, I love some Mike cringe. It's a meat cannon video, bro. 
Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, of course. That's great. I love so, that video. Wait, wait. The, the, the part where Mike comes in looking like a creepy crawler and he's like, you're the bit. You oh, such yeah, a yeah, work yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It. No, I, I I just forgot exactly what happened. I feel like I was just lighting my friends up. I want everybody to know that I love <laughs> Mike Logan. <laughs> no, that's good. If you could talk shit on somebody uh, or to like with them, banter and shit, that's how you know they're a real friend. You know, if, if people can't take your jokes and they're like, well, are, are you being serious? Are you joking? Then that's when you know it's <laughs> nice. So now Steven is here. I told him you're the George of Jeff FM. How do you feel about that? I I think it's a it's an honor. I <laughs> love George Steven Jeff so much. Steven. He was the best. he was asking me. He was like, "Yo, like you know, like why don't you ever go podcast with them? Like do do what they do." I was like, "Look, they their setup works because if I, if you just had three Logans in a room." It would be a tough listen. If you had three Jeffs in a room, it'd be fucking, oh, I fucking ran. How many miles did you run today? That's all. It would be terrible. <laughs> it would suck. You need a nice dynamic, different personalities, different people. And that's why Steven and I click so well because we're polar opposites, you know? No, 100%. Yeah. I love your guys' dynamic. And what I do want to get on, like on your guys' podcast, you guys are very um, entertaining, but there's a level of... Empathy, sympathy, and and morals that you guys don't like to shine because it just it's not gonna get the clicks. That part of your guys' soul of your heart, it's not gonna get clicks. So you guys, you're not gonna do it. And I want to shine on that because you. I, in, I've lived in LA for almost ten years now, and it's it's very hard for me to tell people like I love those people from the bottom of my heart. And you two are very much on my list of people that I really respect and I really love. How, how, how I have you saved in there? It's very refreshing. George here. Vine. Yeah. I have you under Jeff sixteen hundred. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, this friendship goes back nine years. You used to shit. cut my hair and yeah. sell drugs yeah. at the same time. I should, cut, I should cut your hair again. No, I, I have I have a guy <laughs> and he gets mad if like anybody ever touches my hair. For, for content. He's got to understand this is what you do for a living. You know, like. Well, I know. But before, of, like you would cut my hair with two good eyes. Now you have one. Okay. I just don't want I, you to. That's fuck. what I was going for. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I don't want you to fucking like now. Like what have you, uh, you know, I already look, I'm already made fun of enough. I don't need a bad haircut. No, I mean, you have a good. Now haircut. I feel bad. Now I'll let you cut my hair. I was Babe, just joking. You're offending our guests. Whatever. I was just joking. He <laughs> called that, me the outcast of impulsive. Is that our candle? I mean, everybody, that's obvious. Yes, sure. it is. That is your candle. Wow, you, nice. I, by the way, do you see? Oh. That's not sponsored. That's just love. Yeah, I love that. I love it that. smells amazing. Thank and by you. the way, not for nothing. And I'm not just saying this because you're my friend. Your product is amazing. Thank you. Fuck, I, I was supposed to bring something, but I forgot to fucking bring it for Well, you. I have a bunch. Yeah, have we some. have a bunch. Jessica, go grab all those products that Jeff sent us. Bro, by the way, may I just say, I was looking at your website. Dude, your website is so good. Like your merch side and then your product side is such a vibe, the colors. Oh, and then wow. you got like the blonde girl to like model your like yeah. merch stuff. Like yeah, it looks Ellie. sick. One second. I'm, so so I'm so sorry. My I'm so sorry. Babe, we've never had an attractive guest like this i don't want you talking to him like that oh okay i will make eye contact if you're gonna talk to talk to talk to <laughs> <laughs> you know damn well i wasn't talking about you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. is that a laugh track what the fuck that face. sounded like a laugh track going on that's so clean that oh what the fuck damn you got a bathroom voice here you does the bitch no no <laughs> Had a seizure, dude. It's hot, huh? Can we open up a window or something? Maybe AC. Are you guys sweating or no? No, I feel great. I've never gotten any of that. What the heck? <laughs> Do you see all this? Dude, you, didn't, you didn't even send this to me. Your team sent this to me. No, dude. of course I put you on the list, George. I asked you for your address and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I love this. <laughs> this is my this is my favorite right here. Those are are fun. Do you fuck Tana? What the fuck? You go from that to yeah, that? What? We're on to such a good thing talking about products and the website. Uh, I can't take credit for that. I didn't do the website. I don't do code and stuff like that. That was never yeah, answer. My, but the vibe? my team. No, absolutely not. Well, I'll get back to that. No, you uh, the answer is no. <laughs> um, we're business partners. That's it. And I love our dynamic. Together. We're business partners. Um, yeah, I see that. But different, <laughs> different. You were that first, and now you're doing this. It's, yes, okay. it's much different. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. But yeah, I got a good team. You got to believe in okay. your team. If you want to excel wow. in any wow. field in life, mm -hmm. you got to believe in your team. You got a solid one that you're building over here. Thank I God. Love it. You got family involved. That's mm -hmm. good. Yep. You trust her. You know, you can trust her. Absolutely. Reed, he's very talented, but also you got to be careful with him. Yeah. He's you know, from Craigslist. Say this guy makes a short film, gets into Sundance. Mm. He's out. He's out. He's out. 100%. 100%. Yeah. He's artsy. He's creative. Got a beanie on. Do you know, um, you know more than anybody. And for those of you guys that watch YouTube, they don't understand the, the, 
the manpower that comes into creating, editing, shooting. And I, I always had people come and go for, uh, for a shooter. And one day, bro, I'm, I'm just praying and I'm praying hard. I'm like, nah, I need a partner, somebody who's going to build my life with me and not just get what he needs out of something and mm -hmm. leave. And, I, and I'm just tired of as soon as that person leaves, I have to rebuild somebody else. And I said a prayer. I'm not even kidding. I'm just all testimony to God. I'm saying a prayer. And my buddy Greg comes in and uh, he goes, put a, put a list on Craigslist for a shooter. I go, mm -hmm. bro, I'm not trying to get molested, dog. Mm -hmm. like, I want a good camera guy, the guy that goes to school. Like, yeah. something. He goes, dude, don't be stupid. It's 20 bucks. I go, I have to pay? I have to pay to put up an app? <laughs> it was right there. You guys were sitting at the last two chairs Literally. of the island. Yeah. And, and I put I put it up and dude uh, I get I get a bunch of emails but then I get this one that shows unbelievable talent and it's Reed so I call him on the phone by the way doesn't know who Damn, I am you were on Craigslist you oh Craigslist Reed bro hooker you prostitute <laughs> good shit dude you know what he was grinding he was working like not just on social media DMing people like a mass DM that he just copy and paste everybody hey let me work for you let me work for you he was out there putting out his own how many days were you in LA when you got that email eight days eight days. Damn, that's Ooh. a hustler right there. I invited him to my house <laughs> at like 1130 at night. Yeah, I had a pistol literally right here because as I'm coming down the stairs, my family's like, dude, you just invited a dude from Craigslist to your house at 11. Like, yeah. Babe, it's like, so late. I'm oh, like, don't call him right now. I go, that's probably bad. So I put a pistol right here and I covered it up and he, I opened the door and I knew that he was the love of my life. When he looks at Tommy and goes, well, are you going to introduce us? I was like, <laughs> all right, I like this guy. So we came up here, we just hung out, and then it's just been a nice bromance since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always, always love having Reed around. You were there at... Um, Utah? I mean, yeah, like a bunch of trips. Yeah, yeah the first one was the Utah trip. Yeah. That was fun. George and I got in a little wrestling match. Mm -hmm. George is good, man. Secretly, you, I'm just like a ninja dog. You're a secret assassin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like to talk about fighting, bro, because... Then everybody's like, why don't you go fight? And then I'm like, because I don't want to, dude. Like, you have to give up your whole life for a year to fight. And, like, if anybody is a fighter, and you'll comment, you'll see the comments in the section. Real fighters know, bro, I don't care how good you are, how seasoned you are. It just takes one good hit to knock you out. Yeah. And it's too much of a risk for my career. I'm Like, I'm not trying to get humiliated and knocked out and memed, bro. For what? I'm a comedian, dog. I'm here to make you but laugh. You know who's really good at balancing the two? You know, Sean O'Malley. Obviously, you came to the... But uh, he's yeah. a fighter, bro. But he does more content than you and I put together. The kid streams video games. He does two podcasts, three podcasts a week. He's doing TikToks. He's training. He's doing all this shit. He does it all. He's a personality. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, he, he is. is a fighter first. He is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I get why you're the George of the group, bro. Now I get it. <laughs> I yeah. do that shit all the time. Then we wrap up a conversation like, yeah, and he started as a fighter too. <laughs> he said yeah. that like three minutes ago. Oh, I didn't hear. No, I love yeah, you. I forgot we bumped yeah. into you there because you live in Arizona and that's where Sean trains. And you were grappling with him. You're doing some BJJ. Yeah, he fucked me up, and he was doing a lot of illegal moves. Like you put me in a headlock and then like block my mouth from breathing. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But speaking sure of fighting, can we talk about some about some moments that we've well I've witnessed you go through or is that how about this? We'll talk about it if you want to cut that, it. When I broke my fucking hand on that kid's forehead. Can wow. I can I paint the wow. picture up into what I know and then you explain the rest? You asked me this on impulsive on the mm. I Yeah, mean, but people watch this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Let's let's do it. Let's run it back. It's a rerun, baby. <laughs> well, I guess you don't watch the other one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, for those of you guys that are just tuning in to, to the George show. Curious and by the way, George. and by the way, not for nothing, but we could riff a lot more about that story cuz like they probably wrapped me up. They probably like George speak for 30 seconds and then Back to Mike. Well, and I'd, I'd rather not riff about criminal acts that I've done in the past. Acts of okay, violence. Okay, we'll just say it was Reed. Self-defense. There was a guy named Reed we knew. Well, Reed is already a name that's taken <laughs> around here. I was coming back from... Well, this is your life. I can't really get in trouble for any of this, so I'm just going to say it. Um, <laughs> I came back from Trader Joe's at 1600 Every creator under the sun plus American Jeff. So American Jeff was not a creator at the moment. He was just the hottest guy in the building that everybody used, so you 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 could be outlooked by him in videos. Am I wrong or right? Until that other kid came around, we're not going to mention his name. We don't mention him. Wait, we don't mention why, his name. Why is he American, Jeff? Um, it, it's a long story. Actually, it's a short story. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. So I worked in a barber shop in. It was like in the hood. It had all different. Um, uh, 
different types of people that work there. Mm -hmm. And I was just like this fucking young uh, white kid with like hair coming down my my neck. And I had like a, a, there was this one guy, Tree. Tree was the man, best barber, cut all the (laughs) Wu-Tang's hair. Mm -hmm. And he was so funny. He just started calling me All-American Jeff because I would come in with my my school books. I started cutting hair at 15 in the barbershop. And I would have like a hat on, like a fitted hat, and like have. A, he said I had an All American quarterback neck. That's what oh, he started saying. Okay. So then, All American Jeff was my name, and then American Jeff stuck after that. But then everything started getting political as I started getting older. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, if you're like uh, this way, then that means you're. Uh, and I don't know shit. I don't really. I feel too strongly about politics. Mm-hmm. I don't get into it. You know, I usually just spend my time just goofing around with Steve. You know, doing fun. TikToks and stuff. Your your name came from another grown man complimenting your neck. Yeah, yeah. I like That's that. how people get names, George. That's how people get <laughs> nicknames. Like well, Curious you got a nickname? George. Curious George would have been a great name for this podcast. No, it wouldn't, because it's already another monkey. Why did I call myself a monkey? I just literally called myself a monkey. <laughs> Bro, it, spell it with one letter different, but K. Curious with a K. Ooh. Oh, fuck. We should have had him on our meeting. Hey, don't even don't even give that huh because I voted for Curious George. Did you? I did. Anyway, so I was coming yesterday. out of Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> An all-American Jeff. An all-American Jeff was sitting there with his sweetheart at the time, and and some dude was chirping at him. <laughs> and this is my moment, because I looked at him, and I'm like, what's he going to do? Because growing up, I have a friend named Kaveh. She's known, and he knows. And he's pumped the brakes on a lot of men in my life. So I know what it looks like when a dude is like, no, nah, I'm not tolerating that. And they humble somebody quick. But then he escorts his beautiful girlfriend upstairs, and that's, that's pretty much the end of it from there. And until <laughs> till he comes down, <laughs> yeah, and he beats the shit out of this guy. That was that's when I was like, damn! If I'm ever in a sticky situation, I'm calling American Jeff. We're gonna do it the American way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, premeditated, premeditated. Well, it was premeditated self defense. Yeah, because he he charged at you. We had a history, me and the kid. And um, not like he was lived in the building. Something happened. He was up to some shit. He got evicted. I ended up bumping into him on the street months later. Now, this kid, he was one of the first people to take me to an acting class. So I don't know if he felt like he put me on because of that. Yeah. It's like a community acting class. You just go in there. There's like 50 people in there. Pro- probably he got a kickback from that, by the way. Because if you, if you recommend yeah. somebody, they give you kickbacks. Right? He did. Yeah, sometimes they'll give you like, you know free class and i paid for his class too because i was like you brought me so that's like you know Mm. you know you brought me here that's cool like you're getting me to do this shake it out of my comfort zone i did appreciate it but i don't know the kid my career you know yeah he didn't give you talent yeah yeah um thanks that's very nice very nice you Um, are talented thank you uh so yeah i end up um not talking to the kid for a while he gets evicted and i see him on the street and of course, I'm like friendly, you know, I'm, I'm with my girlfriend at the time, ex-girlfriend. She's, we're going on a date. So I see this kid and he's like, don't act like you fucking, uh, or no, he, what did he say to me, George? Do you remember? He said, uh, <clears throat> don't you feel like you owe me something or something? No, no, no. He said, he goes, uh, don't forget what I did for you or some shit like that. Yeah, some he shit said, like, like that. Like, come, give me what, what I, what's due type shit. It was like yeah. that type of energy. Yeah, exactly. Like, don't forget where you came from type shit. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He like tried to sun you, bro. And yeah, I'm just and trying and to I'm, get like almond milk and I'm seeing all this shit. And I'm like, yeah. this is a great morning. <laughs> and I'm with, I'm with like, you know, now I have my girlfriend with me, you know, like I'm not going to be embarrassed in front of her. Even if it was just us two on the street, you know, we'd fight to the death out there because of that line. And right. so he said that I was dressed up for dinner. I had these like Saint Laurent boots on, these slipper on the slippery <laughs> Hollywood stars, the yeah. surface. So I was like, fuck, I don't want to risk it, you know? Yeah. Let me just get out of here. So I took the L right there. I let him say his thing, have his fun. And I was like, baby, let's go upstairs. Um, we're not going to dinner. Or dinner's gonna be a little late. <laughs> <laughs> I go I go and uh I put on like sweats and sneakers. I go back downstairs. (laughs) Yeah, I go back downstairs, and I'm like, "Yo, what the fuck did you say to me?" And right away, he knew I was coming back, so he had a a, kombucha, a Trader Joe's bag, (laughs) and he flings it at my face, and it laser beams right here. I thought it was like bananas or something, so I was just like gonna like block it like that, but it beamed in, blasted me in my face, and fractured. Um, I was on this side, of course, fucking (laughs) (laughs) like that, and it hit me, and my face fucking blew up, and I just. After that, mm-hmm. like he got that one kombucha, and it's a 
thick kombucha bottle. Those yeah. things are heavy. Yeah. It's like a bottle of whiskey that would just bam in my face. Mm-hmm. And so then I, I end up, you know, a couple good right hands. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you're so West Side Story, bro. Like, I want to see you in a musical, bro. Just like, what'd you say, buddy? <laughs> 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 no, we don't do that here, bro. <laughs> yeah, but then I had like fucking blood all over my shirt. My hands broke and my face was bad, swelled up bad. Like I had like a hematoma from how bad that impact yeah. was. Yeah, bro. So I go back upstairs. It wasn't like I just had an easy win. You know, mm-hmm. I was fucked up from that kombucha <laughs> bottle. And now I go back and everybody's like, what the hell did you just do? And obviously we didn't even, we didn't go to dinner after that point. But I went to Rudy's house, Rudy Van Cuso. Yep. And I, like he was downstairs playing piano or something by himself. And I just ran in because I knew that he had these frozen peas in his freezer. Because mm-hmm. we did a vine earlier that day that required <laughs> me to ice my face. Whoa. Whoa, that's crazy! Yeah, Damn. it's a, it's like one of my few vines that I did. Well, I, I I only did maybe like twenty vines, but yeah, that's that's the one we did that day. And I think Rudy, or no, I was a, a thief stealing Amanda Cerny's purse, and then Rudy does like a superhero move, and then he's paying me off at the end of it with cash. that was you, yeah. But you were masked up. You remember that vine? Yeah. Yeah, I had a ski mask on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember That's that. That's crazy. You have a good memory, bro. I didn't know really that was you. Memory. That what? makes sense. You were wearing a wife beater, too. Uh, something like that. I might have been. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even remember. I don't know. I, this, <laughs> this worries me that I don't have the memory of a vine. Well, you got I hit did. with a kabucha that day. So, like, may give yourself a little break. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I've been hitting the head a lot. Yeah. Do you still hang out with anybody from that crew, like the vine days at all, or no? Um. <laughs> You, Logan. <laughs> um, we just went to Lele's wedding. Yeah, that was fun. That Thanks was for the a, invite, Lele. A nice little, that's weird that you didn't get invited. <laughs> I don't ever talk to her. I was making a joke. Mike, Mike seemed like he got offended. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just rub it in more. I don't <laughs> talk to her either. <laughs> oh, yeah. What the fuck, dude? You don't Never talk to her met. either? <laughs> Bro, you know how many fucking Lele Pons videos? Actually, I, I, was I in a lot of Lele Pons videos? I, I've done a lot more uh, probably of her I was vibes. surprised Amanda Cerny wasn't there. Oh, yeah. Amanda Cerny wasn't there? Well, of course not. They had like the craziest beef online. Oh, I was going to bring I'm it up so on the impulsive thing, but everybody's back a, was a towards me, so I couldn't talk. That was a legendary beef. I can't believe you didn't bring that one. Oh, no. She probably would ask to cut that. Fuck yeah, she would ask to cut that. Oh, really? But Is over here. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm going to get into some shit having my own podcast. Stop talking so much. Oh, I'm sorry. Fucking That's his bro, George. <laughs> 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 Literally. Dude, do you, do you feel comfortable with Jeff? Yeah. What do you mean? Why'd you what say do you that like that? scared? Like, yeah, well, like he never even he never even looked at me. He looked at you. You know what he looked yeah. like? He looked like what when the, the police fuck? officer asked the kid, <laughs> "Does your yeah. dad hit you?" He goes, "He looks like an no. abused child." <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he sits like an abused child, bro. bro. You know, well, I, I don't want to like. And this looks like you beat his ass on the wanna, way to the park, and you're like, "Listen, I'll get you this shit. Just don't tell your mom I did that." My cat attacked me this morning, so yo, what's up with it? Look at this mark, bro. Do you want to talk about it? Feel free. Let me see. Feel safe, bro. I just oh. don't. I, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't have the best morning. I got attacked by my cat and I didn't give a shave. I ran out. Your you, cat. You could have a Celsius. It'll make you feel better. You're right. Cheers. Dude. By the way, we never cheers. cheers for this. This You just kind of like made fun of me a little cheers. bit. Right? Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. To Celsius. And, and Celsius. not to circle Ooh. back, bro, but this was like a, this was one of my most special. Throw some of that money over here. <laughs> no, Celsius. no. Don't do that. Where's the vid? Don't do that. <laughs> You didn't even know what he looked like, bro. I invite him to dinner all the time, and you walked right past him. Bro, fuckboy island. He did. He's that's... made you so much money, and you didn't even put a fucking face to the name, bro. I know. That's that's. Uh, it's a little racist. Celsius, I'm an athlete. I'm a real athlete. You know, I'm a triathlete. I do. I did a half marathon. The you other day. running away from robbing a bank doesn't make you an athlete. <laughs> 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 um, all but right. For real though, this new. I don't know, but this is. Did you like the flavor? Uh, yeah, it's nice. It's Very really nice. good. It's like a Sprite almost. Yeah. Kinda. It's like a really? Mountain Dew. It's a juicy, citrusy, yeah. Damn, look at my partner over there. Yeah. Mm. No, really. Bring it, bring I think this is my favorite uh, flavor. So you oh, were, yeah, you're right. You were recently on, recently on a TV show, a big show. Can we talk about that? Oh, of course. Me so, or her? Um, her. Shauna. <laughs> yeah. So her name's, her real name is Shauna Della Rica, but I call her Little Belle. No, I know. I know that. I just, what was your name on the show? What was your character's name? Oh, uh, my name was Caroline. Yeah, it was Caroline. Oh, my and mom's name. Yeah. Yeah, it was your mom's name. Whoa. Yeah. It's kind of hot. And I just was... Hey, but you know it's true, bro. People fall in love with their moms and their dads. Uh, I guess I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Anyways, so mm-hmm. it's Caroline. Oh, yeah, it's Caroline. Yeah, I played 
Dave's love interest in the second episode of season two. I used to really like that show. I, I didn't even know there were more seasons. I just haven't been watching TV like that. But that's dope. That's really yeah, cool no, it's a great show. Thank Little you. Dicky did a great job. And it just got announced. Did it? Yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's all in August it comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, Little Bell said to me right when she got home, she goes, uh, what's his real name? Little Dicky. What's his name? Dave. 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 Wait, really? Yeah, it's the name of the show. Oh, so he uses his real name. It's loosely yeah. about his life, but exaggerated. Gotcha. Like Eminem in so, 8 Mile. You know, it's like, I think that's probably a little... Yeah. Mm, yeah, but... Yeah. 100%. Closer, and so like 50 like, Cent's 50 cents movie was like kind of crazy. Like, yeah. they just like, at the end of the movie where they like just murdered somebody in the back and they're like, yeah, but they closed the door so we didn't show it. Like, you got you get arrested for that. Like, right? There's yeah. no way you would just... You know what I mean? Well, 50 was shot up nine times and... The he, guy who shot him died. Did he? Oh yeah, he got, he got that same, <laughs> in that same. Uh, That's why he goes. He got hit, but I got hit, but he ain't fucking breathing. Yeah. So did Fifty Bars. shoot him back? That's fire. I love that many men. Yeah. Many men. So, how did that go down? You got like a fax guy. How did did Fifty Cent have a shootout? Do you guys? Nah, he this? was probably in the hospital, and his boy was like, "You can't be doing that." Oh, he went and got him after. I don't know, bro. That's I'm not in the friend. hood. That's a good friend. You know that you is need, a good friend. You need friends like that. I would do that for you, Steve. Remember, I almost did that for you yeah, one time. Yeah, you did. It was an assassination I, attempt. I, there, assassin. Yeah, no shit. Nobody, <laughs> gangsta. nobody. She, she, Jessica goes. It was assassination <laughs> attempt. What did you think he was doing? Selling him a brokerage? A what? Actual assassination attempt. They, they, did you not watch the movie Get Hard or Die Trying? Rich. Get rich or die trying? It's okay, Jesse. Me, I haven't either. It's a good <laughs> Okay, homework. You guys got homework to do tonight. Watch Get Richard. I try and watch it's Eight in. Mile and oh, anything wow. else you want to put on the list while we're here? Movies? Follow me. George Janko's movie. <laughs> oh, okay. You never watched my movie. Yeah. Did you? No. no. You should. I think you really like it. How can I watch it? I mean, it's anywhere. I think it right now it streams on Hulu. Bootleg DVD. You could send me home with a fucking uh, do you not VHS have Hulu? tape. <laughs> I have Hulu, yeah. Dave's on Hulu. Yeah. Yeah, so what are you go. watching her, not me? She was in it for Sorry. Like one episode. I had the whole movie. You don't want to support your friends? <laughs> oh, is it a movie like broken up? It's already out. It's a series? It's a movie, bro. What, what? Oh, no, you just said episode, George. I don't know what the fuck. I don't fucking know. I'll watch it tonight. I'll watch it. I got homework, too. What'd you say? No, I was saying you were talking about... I Do you know how to use movie. a microphone? Oh, Sorry. you were talking about... <laughs> nice, Stephen. <laughs> this is how he was talking to you. He goes... <laughs> 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 You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't want to like, <laughs> be invasive. I'm like, I, and should, can I, should I sit over there? So do you feel clustered? Yeah, sit over well, here. Should I sit over there? I thought so this was like a, you. Well, do you, you feel comfortable? No, I do. Do you feel comfortable putting my, like, if I put my arms around you? No, go ahead. Okay, okay. Do I just want to make sure you consent and all. You know, Jeff went after guys that tried to rob me one day. He what? He protected my life, Jeff. Where were you that somebody tried to rob you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what see, I'm he like, says Jeff. <laughs> nah, I was, I was at, it was like. Can we get him headphones? Do you need headphones? No, if you want, I don't care. think I need to care about shit like that. Dude, I, now I get why I have money. I'm gonna put you in a box best. and put you in my pocket, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, wait, I don't know. What I feel you like want. you could turn any situation into such a like a, a, a like a happy Disney moment. Yeah, we just resolved our, our, our misunderstanding. We just had a misunderstanding that, where we were talking about you were saying episodes of her show and I was saying in your yeah. movie. So I confused that and Stephen cleared it up. Good. That's what we need. A fucking right hand or right hand, right hand man. You know, mm -hmm. third guy. Who's your second? Uh, mm. That's a good question. So you don't Definitely. even have a second, but you have him Mike as third. How <laughs> unloved are you? Is my second guy also... <laughs> Mike is your second guy? Is Mike been on your uh, like podcast a lot? I have a few rotating in second guys. Yes, yeah, like second guys Tana, a big big spot. And if you put somebody in that, it, it could get an ego real quick. You we know? had an episode. How like, did that? How did my episode do on your platform? Great, you rapped. It was it was dope. It was really good. Uh, you know, what's so funny. We were there for like two hours, and I was like, "That's going to be a long, awesome podcast." Forty minutes. What happened? <laughs> was it? What happened? <laughs> what? I, we were there for two hours, bro. Maybe and the, the best part is, I watched my episode. Forty minutes is you talking at the beginning. <laughs> was it? Yeah, you're like, before George comes, I want to get into some things. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do that? I used... <laughs> oh fucking two God. hours of my life sitting there, like, yes. Yeah. So then my mom, <laughs> right before she had to leave Iraq, kissed my grandmother off of a boat. Cut. Oh my god. Why Gone. Talk like a gay. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, you just put on a gay, gay man's voice. Yeah. No, that's my voice. That's my. Like, that's my Bro. Best. That is, it's his storytelling. That's voice. not an impression of me. 
what he just did. Yeah, that was not Jeff. No, that was fucking talk like dude, that. This is you. Before Judge comes in here. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? This video is sponsored by True Classic. It is a clothing line. I gotta say, I'm wearing them right now. I'm wearing their jeans. I'm wearing their shirt. I'm not kidding. I want to get rid of all of my clothes. And, I, and I'm not paid to say that. They gave us talking points and we're gonna get right into them. But I'm just truly showing my authentic, like, I really love this brand. I've been wearing them nonstop since they sent it to you because you're working with them. Yeah, I'm working with, yeah, you put on their clothes right away. I I filmed my ad and you kept wearing it. Nah, you gotta try it. Like, I, and I'm some on some real. Shit. My code is Janko. Go use the code. Just get something. Return that shit if you don't like it. I am that confident that when you wear it, you're gonna be like, oh, this is this is just a different level of clothing. In fact, I know this brand's watching because they're sponsoring this podcast. Send me more. You know my address. <laughs> send me more. In fact, no, if you literally. send me all of your collection, I will make a video. I'll throw away all my clothes and wear that. Like, I found some real. <laughs> It's function meets fashion. It is durable, premium quality fabrics that are built to last. This is your one-stop shop for men's fitted shirts, pants, athletic wear, and loungewear. They have pre-assembled outfits to make shopping and styling a breeze, uh, a fit for every season, and layered looks that are custom designed to fit your body. Just use my code. Try it on yourself. I promise you, you're going to love it. Trueclassic.com. Janko. I don't know what that was, but let's get back into the podcast. Out of all episodes I've done, we're new. This is my favorite one so far. Like, I feel like I'm with the boys. Thank it's, you for coming on the show. It's a super chill, comfortable show. Thank uh, you. I like it, and it's always good to catch up with you, George. We've been through so much over the years, you know, seeing you. We've been slow and steady. You know, we haven't been like those people that pop and then fucking. You but know. you know what? That w slow and steady ruins the race. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're we're long we're long form content creators. Yeah, yeah, but it's been a while. A lot of a lot of dark times. Actually, you've always been pretty. You know, I have had dark times. Um, I just don't marinate in them. I don't remember you being as religious as you are now back in the 600 days. Because I grew balls, bro. And I was like just watching my friends and family around me talking about shit that they're passionate about. And it was just the most raunchy and gross things. And I was just like, damn, bro. Like one day I just was sitting there just reading the Bible. And I was like, how is it that these guys can talk about drugs, sex, and all of this stuff? And if I remotely bring up a spiritual like god that has done so much for me everybody's like nah and so one day i really went into it being like i'm ready to risk it all bro like take but it we, all away from we me. had like times in private when i would cut your hair you never like yeah. oh oh i don't i i like to th this is the Did type you of have like a breakthrough something happened to you in life oh like, you mean like uh, in 1600 yes so so like after because yeah this is back 1600 this is maybe i'm talking like what eight years ago yes or some shit. I, I have always had a great relationship with god i think when turbulence hit my life when it came to losing friends noticing that the, the people's hearts are not as as pure as mine and i started getting uh in situations where i thought i'd never be i just leaned on a relationship that i could always trust and through this situation i was like man i really could just be doing it me and god and the people that i love and i grew this thick skin where it's like you can never do anything to affect me my blessings and my curses only come from god alone and nobody else because has any jurisdiction over my heart this happened right around the beginning of Impulsive where I was like, I experienced the fame a little bit. You know, yeah. I had the movie, I had the TV shows, I had the money where I was like happy that I've always dreamt that I would have. And then I realized I was like, oh, I, I'd rather let go of all of this and then have a good relationship with God. And then ironically, which I think it was meant to be, as soon as I did that, then I really experienced success. I thought yeah. I was successful until like Impulsive just took me to a whole different level. And mm -hmm. now we have... A different lifestyle and 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 i have more opportunities coming out uh god willing people could see them coming in the future uh and it, i i give it all into the glory of god i i'm i'm just here working and this is this is the authority that i'm on so god is my what, provider i'm gonna love everyone around me equally even the people that hate me i'm gonna love them because they don't have a say what happens in my life mm-hmm and that's just how I, but if yeah. you're asking me like, why haven't I never bring up Jesus to you? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not asking that. I'm just wondering if there was like a, something like an event that happened, like a specific event. Cause that's, and I, I, I know of a lot of my friends that found God again, you know, like reborn through prison. Maybe they got arrested and they, the only thing they really let you leave for in jail or whatever. It's like, you can go out to the yard maybe once a week and you can go to church once a week and that's the only time you get to leave the dorm yeah so when i was arrested in miami i was there for a few months and i was just like you know you're bored you're sitting there you're in jail and not much to do you know so 
they do the church call, whatever. So I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, you know, you get to go for a walk outside and go to the church, and you're all sitting there. You're all in orange jumpsuits, and, you know, it's not like a church. It's just a room in the jail. But, you know, you're talking, and they're telling you a story. And um, I, I think uh, they, they, the preacher that was in, in the jail, he, the way he framed it was like, you are placed here. Like, think about what happened. Like, God needed to put you here mm. in this spot for you to really sit down, slow down, and focus. And that really got to me, and that stuck with me for a while. And a lot of times, like, I have friends that have done... I was only there for a few months, so it wasn't, you know, like, that life-changing. But my friend Cody, who was away for four years, he came out, and he, like... Four years, a lot changes. You know, like he, he didn't he didn't know what AirDrop was. Oh. He didn't know what AirPods were. Basically, Apple's technology had changed a lot. The, wor- <laughs> the world was very similar. That's such a funny That's way of putting yeah. it. Yeah, Apple had a few upgrades. <laughs> <laughs> Updates. Yeah, I had to take him to the Apple store. He's like, "Yo, no wires, bro. This shit's great." But he did have <laughs> no wires. <laughs> he did have a phone in there, but it was like an older model of the iPhone. But um, yeah, he came out and he was so intense with it. You know where he would come over to me and maybe I would be editing or something. Like, he doesn't really understand my lifestyle now because when he went in, we were just selling weed, you know. So I didn't do stuff where it's, like, constantly 24-7. As a social media person, you have to be on it. You have to either be thinking of ideas, what you're going to edit, what you have to do. So, you know, boo, this photo of life's so hard. But it is a lot. You know, your mind (laughs) has to be a lot of the No, no, it is. And a lot of people don't understand. But, yeah, of course. You you yourself are doing 10 people's jobs. Yeah, he would come up to me and and he would be like, yo, enough of this. Read this. And he hands me the Bible. And I'm like, yo, bro, (laughs) I I appreciate it, but we got to keep these lights on, you know? (laughs) Like, this is my job now. I know it looks like I'm goofing around making silly videos, but this is is my career. And I like that he was there pushing me. Like, he got me to go back to church again because I was raised Catholic. Uh, my, My parents are... Catholic they still go to church every Sunday and they, and they would take me but around like 16 actually around like 13 they were just like all right we're, I'm the baby too so I wasn't like forced to do anything they just let me do whatever I want so they were like all right we're not gonna force you to go like you know and then I didn't go for a while but like I said ended up you know temptation really got to me and I did some bad stuff nothing nothing morally that wrong I just bent the the laws a little bit you know i'm gonna do this i'll sell weed i'm not gonna sell heroin you know because that kills people they overdose but i was selling weed because you know nobody dies from weed it's decriminalized it's just not as did you smoke weed at the i didn't smoke weed when i sold it ironically now i smoke was it because you don't want to or is it because you you don't don't smoke your supply i just didn't like it okay i I, I wish i would have to smoke to test out pounds that I was buying because all weed's different you know oh, yeah. but yeah no I just had friends that, and I knew what from the look and smell I was able to figure out what I have a theory of what you're going on about like about the you know him going to jail for four years <clears throat> in the Bible it, it very much explains the people that see God are the people that want to see God mm-hmm. so that scales right so when I was at in my mind at the time when I got on impulsive, you got to understand, like my dream was to have everybody in the world know my art. And so at that time I was like, this is crazy. Like, I can't believe I got in this position, but the feeling was absent and it bothered me. And that mm-hmm. actually is what stemmed my depression. I had like this really, really bad depression for like a year or two. Yeah. And I realized it was my happiness came from God. So I searched for him, and then the more I searched, the more I found. So I really wanted to get wrapped up in his light more. So it doesn't matter where you're at. It's just unfortunately, as human beings, we don't want to talk to God until we're in danger. Mm -hmm. And so that is why that guy was like, you know, God had to bring you here. It's kind of like the, the, it's a parable, right? There was a... I just did, we had a situation, sorry to interrupt, but we were just down in Walgreens, and... I said a little prayer down there and it was answered immediately. And I'm not saying it's like, it's ridiculous thing. Steven's credit card that got declined down there. I'll just, you, you look, pray I had that to say it. Car to not, get declined? I did. Cause I was filming it and it was an embarrassing moment <laughs> and it was funny. And I really wanted that on video. Cause he's just <laughs> laughing at it, you know, like, and it, I don't know. I don't know why I got declined. He has, he makes money, you know, it's not yeah. that it's just Steven being there awkward and nervous and the card gets declined. And like, Oh, we got a credit card declined up here. This <laughs> is <laughs> Steven. Hoover's. So I was just loving that. And then he pulled out another card and he's like, watch this. No. How about this bad boy? And, and it, it was says, like a cool private card. member. It's like a metal card. Yeah, that like he got. a sick looking card. And I'm like, please, God, if you're going to answer anything for me, let it be this. 
make this one get declined. And it gets declined, and he was so certain that it was going to work. And I was like, thank you, God. And, bro, this is literally 10 minutes ago downstairs. Well, That's I mean, hilarious. if it makes you see God a little clearer, then by all bro, means, I'm happy. That was my moment right there. So I was just wondering if you had a moment like that. But it's even better. It's probably better that... Did you, you set guys? up all of my uh, like my most vulnerable moments? <laughs> just for yeah, that? yeah, I <laughs> did. Too much hard to climb, bro. I'm out of, out of my mind. I got mental problems. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm breaking out parables. I'm like, anyway. So if you want to really break the it goes. I'm not trying to interrupt. No, you, I mean, I wasn't trying to. Say but God made his now. shit like decline and <laughs> got me a yeah. funny bit from my Snapchat. Thank God. Can I ask you something? If we're gonna talk about a. Like, like actual deep moments like this? Because I do yeah. want to get into the deep side of things. We're not going to get... Because we all know the situation that happened with you and it's redundant for me to go and see... What situation? You know. I've been in a lot of situations. The, the, the bigger one. The one that you made a doc over. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the uh, recent one. Yeah, I could be dead right now. I should be dead. It doesn't make sense that I'm not. I just... I want to get into the... Uh, <laughs> your... Because your, your, we had a great conversation on the plane. We did. We're not going to get into what we talked about on the plane, but it was the first time in my life where I looked at you and I'm like, okay, I get it, bro. Like, you're jokes, but you're no, deep, bro. But, you are but, deep. But Logan was in front of us with his girlfriend and he was like trying to sleep and George was just giving it to me. He's like, listen, <laughs> this chapter of the Bible, read this tonight. Then I say something else. He's like, okay, this part of the Bible, I want you to read this. And he was just going on and Logan at the end of it, he was like, George, come on, <laughs> come on, bro. But again, like, dude, I don't, I don't, you asked no, me. No, bro, I know, I know. Yeah, so and like, like I, people always like go like, dude, saying, you just go up and bother me. I'm not Mormon, bro. I'm not knocking on your door asking you to talk. Or about like Cody, when he first got out and he was institutionalized and just, he took my laptop away. He's like, read this. And you do know? five push-ups. <laughs> yeah, like you can't force it on people is what nah, I, where I was going. I wasn't I, going to the Walgreens story. I was going to like, you can't force religion on people. You mm -hmm. said that. You're like, you got to want to. Never, bro. You can't. You, because, dude, it's like you're only going to see God when you want to see God. So mm -hmm. when you were asking me these questions that were very deep and it opened up my eyes and I was like, dude, this guy, he, you have it. You have that layer in your heart that... Bro, I, I talked to some human beings in the world. I'm like, this guy's a fucking drone, bro. Like, this, there's no way this guy's Ooh, real. Name them. I can't, but like there's, you know who I'm talking about when it comes to like <laughs> individuals that are in this industry or out of this industry. Like you see them and you're like, how do you sleep at night? Or how do like, how does your brain function like that? Yeah. There's a level of morals and ethics that these people don't have. Mm -hmm. And when I'm listening to, that's why, I, by the way, that's why I surround myself with Logan and Mike, regardless of them being fucking chachas sometimes, their yeah. morals and, and their, and their heart is always lined up. Mike is an amazing human being and will fucking be there for you in a second. Logan's the most generous person I've ever heard in my life. Like, just yeah. dude just gives everything he has. But when yeah. I met you, I thought that you were just this good-looking dude that tells jokes and, and is just trying to get from breaking bread here to just trying to move up. But when we had that conversation, I realized quick, bro, that you have this soft side to you that you don't like to show. And my question is to you, did you show that to your old friends... And how does it feel to see your, you separate yourself from that crew, bro? Because that's, that's uh, traumatic, bro. It is a traumatic experience. You'd be surprised. Like a lot of, my, a lot of the people I grew up with were Muslim. And, you know, that's an extreme religion. There's a lot of stuff that they abide by. You know, they don't drink alcohol. They don't eat bacon and stuff like this. And these are like things that come up often, you know. So, uh, you know, I always respected everybody's religion. And, you know... I think it's cool. Whatever you believe in something, I think that gives you more of a moral conscious. And I think it's great that everybody has religion in their life. But I wasn't ever afraid to say I believe in God or like I'm religious, you know. It's never like, I, no, I never had any shame in that. I, no, I, I'm I just, would never not say like, oh, yeah, you know, F, I'm not going to say that. Well, over no, here. I, I think I think you, I think you. The I think you were saying more yeah. about like your old friend, like like with yeah. them. Did you ever have like deep conversations with them about? Yeah, did like, you have like? No, we wouldn't get time. deep about it, but we wouldn't hide it. You know, we wouldn't get deep about anything really. Well, it wasn't you know? not, not religion aside, like anything, emotions. No, anything? I'm talking. I'm talking about. I'll just I'll just flat out say this: uh, the David Dobrik crew. 
to like this just this crew that you're um, growing and bu building with like no I never talked any religion with any of them no. not religion bro i'm just I, yeah I, I, it's so funny that every everything i say people just think it's religion <laughs> i think so i think that's awesome but like no and it's the not the only the only one that can translate in george language is steven because he, <laughs> he's, he's he understands thank you by the way no, steven I mean, I, like any deep talks with that group did you ever have? Like, bro, you think ever about it. Like, them? Yeah. Ever, yeah. Well, we were friends for a long, long time. The deepest talks I had would probably be with Jason. You know, Jason was uh, like one of the guys I could relate to because he has life experience. You know, he's had it rough. He's had ups and downs. And even like, you know, uh, Jonah was I was close with. And that's what I'm saying. Like, how do you how, like I want to talk about this stuff because, bro, there's so many people that build a life with somebody it doesn't have to be a, a sexual relationship it could be like a business relationship for example my my situation with reed and i asked god god i'm tired of having to start fresh with somebody i want somebody who's loyal that's next to me so i'm watching you go from this crew which i'll just blatantly say it like i love the crew i, I have nothing against the crew but i could tell it's content i could tell that, that it's not at a at a, a level of authentic that i i would love to live by but then i'm watching you leave that and building stuff like with steven and like I've seen the conversations you guys have yeah. behind camera. Which one to you weighs more? And if you could go back in time and have all of that happen to you again, would you let it happen to you? Did it did it come out? It's a lot of questions in there that that you just there's like multiple questions. So we'll break it down. We'll but I believe that you could answer all of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, we had yeah we had a real close relationship with some of them. Some of them, the relationships were very surface level, and it was just for content. But um, no, I mean, we, I do, I, I don't regret anything. Obviously to go back from the accident, I would go back in a heartbeat. Yeah. Would you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Just cause vision wise, that shit bugs me every day when I look like but, if but I go to look it, at Reed right now, I get pissed off cause I'm like, that don't work cause of this, you know, does, is it, is it getting better or is it like, no, I it's done. I shit's, it is what it is. Like I've tried getting surgery a bunch, but it didn't really work out so that like bummed me out a little bit but like i said i could be dead i could be blind i'm like grateful grateful yeah. and i'm i'm past that part it's been two and a half years now you know um in the beginning yeah those were my friends and steven asked me a good question on the way over he was like did you have other friends like that like because yeah i was telling him like i've been friends with george for eight years when you called me it said george vine and he was like did you like have other friends and i was like yeah of course i had other friends but when i got so invested with that crew it stopped hanging out with like a lot of other people and you know, you just don't really maintain relationships as much anymore. But once all that ended for whatever reasons, like what came right back to you guys, not came right back, but no, I know, I mean, what, I know exactly what you're it, saying, bro. And we picked up right where we left off. Yeah. That's what a good friendship is. You could yeah. say bye to somebody for three years. And if it's real and authentic, as soon as you see each other, it's like right where you guys left off. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's how we always are. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I was hesitant to jump into another group of content creators, you yeah, know, no and especially with one like Logan, as big as Logan is, and the yeah. stuff that like Logan's been, you know, like it's not, like I, I feel like I relate to Mike and Logan more than most of the other guys in the crew. We have similar interests, and Mike is more my speed with like the way it's, he jokes around, the way he talks, uh, you know, East Coast guy, and like has a bet, like a, a, a dark past, you know, he's has a history with addiction and shit like that so I, I, Mike and I were like actually really good friends I would consider Mike one of my best friends and I said it the other day <clears throat> for the first time and I was like holy shit did I just say that out loud is Mike my <laughs> best friend the I fuck? love how you went <clears throat> like something was caught in his yeah, throat yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like whatever <laughs> do you know you remind me of and I'm not trying to be disrespectful but a pit bull that has is just fucking ready to rip any dog's head off but like very like sensitive but like has bull, the capability like to fucking just shred all of us up like a, a little bulldog yeah like an english bulldog that was like yeah. you know okay. mistreated <laughs> it's okay it's okay but um no so what was, what was that so back oh. to that because there was a lot of questions in there <clears throat> what was the last one that you said well you just answered about like moving from crew to crew so i guess the next question is like oh yeah i was setting hesitant. your own like, yeah, yeah. I, I was hesitant um but yeah, like I, I love it because you guys understand the business. You get like how we have to move and film shit. Like I have my real crew too. That's like my every days, like Steven and Kyle and Oscar and the girls that I work with for the products. And she also the website Nev and Mackenzie. And oh, Nev, I've, I love Nev. Yeah, Nev's the best. She's uh, you, you've been friends with Nev for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. talented. Yeah, as soon as I had something to do with like 
my life goal, which was the products, I hit up Nev because I just trust her with everything. And yeah, like I have my team that I can actually count on. Like I am responsible for it. If something goes wrong with one of them, I'm responsible for it, vice versa. If I go down, you know, it's going to affect these guys. So I'm aware of that. And yeah, like Does I don't that regret put stress every, on you. I don't regret like what happened. Yeah. If I could go back to do like an injury thing, yeah, I would go back. But no, all the lessons I've learned in life from everything, the worst shit that ever happened to me were the best lessons. Obviously, I know that that goes without saying, but um, yeah, I, I, I learned a lot from those, those shitty fucking s- situations. But, um, like I always say that Tame Impala line is like one of my favorite quotes. Eventually terrible memories will turn into great ones because you take so much away from the terrible memories and you look back at them. You're like, mm. those are the best stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you feel that pain, you know, you actually experience these emotions. And if you're just, I don't know, I think those, those emotions are important to really like embrace feel them you know yeah. live in them like if you could cry even you're just alive you're crying just fucking enjoy it just picture you're in a movie what, what was the last time you cried you had a nice film camera a yeah. nice fucking a24 like a24 setup. okay yeah and you're just crying yeah. listen to like some Stan. dope soundtrack yes yeah, Stan or something when was the last time Eight you cried mile. steven you think about yours oh man uh nerf sign yeah, that was rough I'm oh, sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I think you texted me too. Of course, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it's your best friend, and and I knew I knew him since 1600. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and he, and crazy. by the way, like he was the oldest dog I think I've ever met in my life. Like that. Yeah, he, same. He, he he he. I think he exited your life at the perfect time, bro. I think. Yeah. I think he knew to stay with you, and I think that. Oh, he was hanging on for a while. There was like a part, like the last year of Nerf's life, he was just uncontrollably pissing on everything. He would be in the background of Steven. He made one of your TikToks go viral because Steven was doing like a bit and it was pretty funny. Like, you know, it, but you got to know Steven. You got to know the bit that he's doing kind of. Yeah. But when you just see a dog randomly start pissing, because you can't cue a dog to piss. You can't be like, yo, piss now. So Nerf just started ripping. He let it rip like a fire hose in the back of his video. And all the comments <laughs> were just, yo, that dog just started pissing like crazy. And the algorithm picked it up and it went fucking nuts. So, Aww. yeah, S- Steven, there you go. Nerf gave you a little blessing right before he took off. Yeah. That's I'm awesome. so sorry about Nerf. That must be hard. Oh, I met no, him thank once. You. Had the pleasure. Well, yeah. When was the last time you cried? Last night? <laughs> <laughs> Why? I Why? saw the guy, you know what is so <laughs> weird about what he just said? <laughs> Dude, and it was, it was so about funny. just video on Nerf. I swear. No. I swear really? on everything. No I swear on everything. I asked Karen, he walked in on me and I was like, oh. No Set way. Up. I was like, I'm, not, I'm good. You were watching Isn't it and you were thinking back on Nerf? I know. I just thought that was how weird that was. And when you said that, that, that was also my last time was about Nerf. It was really? a sad video. It was like, you, he started, yeah. never seen him cry before, so he started crying. Oh, is it the, uh, yeah. I cried in two things. I cried in the video where we did the memorial where we spread his ashes and then we skydived out of the balloon, which was crazy because no, you're like, a, the podcast. yeah, the podcast with Mike, that was deep too. And look, Mike came through to, you know, he was there for, for well, me when Nerf passed, he showed up. Not like, you, you know, you, you were like everybody, I have so many people reach out. It was so nice. Everybody really understood. Um, but yeah, Mike came by and, uh, fuck man. I like, I was, it's tough to like look at pictures of, of Nerf. Like he's was such a big part of the content, but um, like I was making an Instagram post about him and having to actually write that when somebody passes, like you, it hits. you know that you like you, you anticipated that moment for so long, and then when you're finally in that moment doing it, and you're like you have to say goodbye, like it's your last message to your best friend, and like I I, I was going through a lot at that moment. It was the day he passed, and like now I got to go through. I have more pictures of Nerf than I have with anybody in the world. And I have to go through, pick my favorites, make a nice caption. You know, it's one time you get to do that and that's it. So I'm having Mike proofread it and like help me with it. Cause I was just like all, you know, Mike is good with his grammar or yeah. whatever. So Mike's German videographer comes over, David, who has a very cold personality. Bro, he <laughs> very, very stone cold. So cold. Fuck. He goes, <laughs> shit, what do you do? And he comes into the room. What is this? Everybody on their phones. What is this generation? I'm like, yo, such a David bro. line. I was like, yo, I'm doing my fucking dead dog post right now. I can't wait for your fucking dog to die. And as he's walking his dog, I was just, I was ready to kill at that moment. And he came in right fucking perfect time. And David, yeah. read the room, bro. Read the room. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're all there crying. The fact that he brought his dog TikTok. to yeah. fucking David, bro. Right. That's why yeah. we call him German David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just David, you know. And I like him for him, you know. I. I know that's his personality. I get it. 
but it was just funny in that moment that like yeah. he fucking comes in there and that's when he decides to say <laughs> what this like, generation is Mike like huh it was Mike like this like, no, no. <laughs> no Mike no. knew Mike was like yo if you get up and strangle stupid. him right now I don't even care <laughs> Yeah, their but. relationship is uh, interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of like watching Roseanne, but the BTS, where they actually hate each other and they don't like working with each other, but they actually air that instead of like anything else. <laughs> yeah, like, it's the funny. Like people are like, oh, they really don't hate each other. No, they do. Like he's actively looking to replace David he, all the time. He needs to go on, <laughs> on but like do a Craigslist post, huh? Mike won't pay that twenty dollars. That's, <laughs> that's <the thing. laughs> he would have an issue with that, bro. You know how funny it is to watch David go. Shut up, man. You haven't even paid me in three months. <laughs> and Mike goes, man, you know how it is. Yeah, like David, David is like, he's not always a bad guy. He's got to put up with Mike, who is nonstop up at 8 a.m. There could be like a, a, I mean, bro, he lives in that house with the ring cameras everywhere. Mm -hmm. David gets up for a snack in the middle of the night. Mike's like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's going on? It's just. Imagine it's, living with Mike as the home owner bro even yeah. logan couldn't deal with it he's like bro i can't deal with this like he, if you leave a mess anywhere like if yeah. you if this is the coaster and you go he'll be like what are you fucking born in oh, a sorry. fucking yeah. oh no you don't have to do that i was just doing that for uh <laughs> like, well that's all the table was no no, no don't yeah, worry he's about a it bro. karen big time but, you know what, but it's no, like no. Mike, did you forget you did heroin underneath a bridge bro relax no, you bro. know what and i think that's the reason why he's that way because he's like this is like my first house that i bought this is my furniture that i own yeah. and he's so proud to have gone to this point that he's like you know when you just finally get something and you want it to be perfect yeah. you know mm -hmm. bro i actually thought about mike last night this just reminded me I, I <laughs> this is gonna sound so stupid, but I'm in I'm in the middle of my prayer and I'm, I pray for my friends. So like I think about them and as I'm, and I literally just takes a second. And I'm like, am I roasting this guy about his drug addiction too much? Like I really took a second to be like that. You know, erase ten years of his life. Like are any of the jokes that I shoot at him where he laughs? Like in his mind, he goes, oh, <laughs> like. So now I'm gonna like kind of no, hang back on the. No, you no, think? no. That's just a part of it. You have to own those things. As a comedian, you need to be able to lean in to your darkest, most um, embarrassing things. I think that's what makes people the funniest, you know? Yeah, I get it. 100%. If you're going to dish it, you got to be able to take it. And he dishes it back to you too, you know? Oh, it's, yeah, he it's, does. It's a fair trade-off. You got to be that way in this business. You have to be. You have to have thick skin, bro. Mm -hmm. You really have to have thick skin. I literally just had this you quote. You not give a fuck, and you got to fucking give it back. Like, nah, bro, I think like, that's a dangerous slope. I like, think once you I go not giving a fuck, I think then you stop giving a fuck about things you should be giving a fuck about. I think yeah. it's like a poison in yeah, the heart. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. But like he, he uh, took like a mental health break around Christmas time. Not because of me, because he's beefing with somebody else. But, Said that pretty quick. But um, <laughs> but, but no, no we, we've always had a, a good relationship, but uh, he was like, like about the barbershop we're like really aggressive to each other and sometimes he's like wait are you kidding are you actually, are you <laughs> dude that was a great impression bro that was a great was impression are you, are, you, are you actually mad at me are you actually mad <laughs> do an impression of him go you fucking motherfucker you dumb fuck oh that's so great so <laughs> oh, that's how he laughs <laughs> yeah but no we were like get into it and i was like bro just dish it back because some of my favorite things about when we because he replaced another guy that used to be there on the show with yeah. me and he, he his name will, we won't say even though we talked about it 20 minutes ago <laughs> but he would come right at me about my eye you know like fresh right out the gate like my shit was still fucked up it was barely <laughs> that's a little even, fucked up you know like you need to give it some time bro yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that shit was <laughs> hanging on by a thread and he was like yo cycle everything you said was fucking I can't tell if you're looking at me or he was just non-stop he was even repeating the same jokes we're like bro that made the cut last episode you said <laughs> For, for the last seven episodes like enough but i just told steven like you know don't be afraid to say horrible things to me you know just throw shit at the wall see what sticks well and that's why he got a sketchbook he's gonna write them oh, down he did he the last explain to me what is the this last episode what is he was this doing for? it um i don't know he had uh, he's been painting it's for therapy well, no, I, I honestly thought well i thought it was gonna be like over there or something else yeah I'm he was just coming right to hang right. i don't think he knew that he was gonna do the yeah. wait, wait 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 hold on hold on hold on youth <laughs> You thought like, all right, well, Jeff's doing the podcast. Let me just stop at Walgreens real quick. <laughs> Get a coloring book. Yeah. You are literally like the cutest human being I've ever met in my life, dude. 
Is this, is this one of these things where you have to color in? Because if it is, I'm shitting. No, it's right just now. white paper. Oh, okay. Damn. So you're yeah. like an artist. Yeah, creative. Really. I don't creative freedom. Before, Damn. It sounded fun. Color in the lines. What are we, babies? There's no <laughs> lines in this. Just paper. <laughs> Your imagination. Yeah. Mm. What's next for you, bro? Good question. Uh, fucking podcast, make YouTube videos. Um, you never want to do the fight scene, bro? Because I know, like, dude, no, by the way, what the fuck the, did you just go around swinging at people at the beach a month after your first surgery for your eye? Bro, I got mental problems. I, I, <laughs> I, love, I, I love combat sports so much. And like I said, with comedy, like I wasn't ready to let that accident just become, you know, me. I for know, the rest of my bro, life. that's so fresh. Mm -hmm. I know. So well, fresh. no, it wasn't that fresh. I hadn't said anything about it, so it seemed fresh to you, but that was about a year and a half in. That's still fresh, bro, for a punch? Uh, and also, it was not, like, hard sparring. I, the guys knew. I was like, we said it off camera. We were oh, like, watch out. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, so, and Steven is the only one that hit me in the eye. And we actually think that it's <laughs> it straightened <laughs> it out. It. No because way. Because it was so, like, fucked up at that time. And he knocked it back into yeah. place, and it looked. It's finally started looking good after that. <laughs> wow! Are you fucking? With I it? swear, bro. We've said it on podcast. We like it. Steven's always said it too. He's like, "Yo, I fixed your eye." That's <laughs> this hilarious. kid needs to be an optometrist, a neuro. Was it? Did he, did you see that hit coming, or did he get you clean? It was a. We both he jabbed at the same it. time. Yeah. Good for you, Steven. And yeah, it was like a. <laughs> it was like we both connected at the same time. But so it was you like got a the, little tap. You, you have the podcast, and then I made him pay for it. Mm -hmm. But he kind of just like healed up and like let like he knew that he was like oh fuck here we go and just <laughs> <laughs> knocked you yeah. out. Did it hurt? No, I didn't yeah, knock yeah. you out, bro. This, he, yeah, one day he's gonna make he's gonna put together a video on me of all he's, these things. Yeah. <laughs> His sketches are why just like dead Team cats. 10. He's just so sad. He's like, <laughs> remember those why I left Team Ten videos? Why I left Jeff FM? <laughs> It's gonna that. be a lot less I would views. Never do that. Yeah, you would. You texted me. You were like, hey, do you want to like co like collab on this? And I said, yeah, <laughs> I'm not even part of your Jeff. That'd be my credible <laughs> source. That might hit 50k if you're lucky. Not those Team Ten numbers. Ten mil to leave Team Ten. Damn. 10 views do you or remember something. those days? Yeah, of course. Everybody would just leave. <laughs> yeah, just, just exiting. Leave to get that thumbnail. Why I left Team Ten, bro. What hurt me, bro? It was like I watched. I'm not gonna get into the Team Ten shit, but like Jig was always. He was always a good dude. He was never doing anything like. Yeah. Terrible, and the way they painted him was just kind of fucked up. Moving on from that, that was like ten years it's ago. A bunch of kids. What, what's right? next, bro? What? So you got the podcast? You got you got uh you got this. I don't think anything was wrong with the Team Ten model. I think Jake saw straight out of Compton. I remember because I remember you guys asked me. You're like, "Yo, we're putting this thing together." You know, Jake saw it straight out of Compton was what sparked it. He bro, saw when he brought you downstairs into the dungeon yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my dungeon god! And I really <laughs> liked you guys, but I just wasn't <laughs> ready to sign that you know I, by the way thank you i'm flattered that you're like you guys <laughs> you were a part of it you were an accomplice for I, team 10 i was i was just their first uh you know what it was test i think study. i was their test study yeah and i think th i was just a success yeah but i think they just you know they forgot that i'm just fucking talented bro. don't get me wrong look at what it did for some of those people i, I like if it's on you at the end of the day like you could put people on and, and whatever but if they're not talented if they're not likable if they're not creative and they're going to figure out how to monetize that that clout or whatever you want to call it then they're going to fucking you know disappear or whatever but like look at Alyssa Violet i just saw her at the wedding she's fucking crushing it she's mm -hmm. doing great she made a career out of out of all that yeah, she signed a contract. She's an anomaly, though, bro. I guess so, yeah. She is uh, an anomaly. Even, as I'm saying this, I'm like, who else was in it? I don't... No, there's people that came out of Team 10 um, that... Like, Lucas and Marcus have a pretty good YouTube channel, and they're, they're still doing... They have to be doing good. They have, like, all these sports cars. But Alyssa Violet was just an, an anomaly because, bro, this girl could leave YouTube for, like, a year, come back, and destroy the numbers. Yeah. I, honest to God, and I'll say this in front of Logan and Jake, if she did a quarter... A quarter of the work that Logan or Jake did, yeah, she would blow them out of the water without even even yeah, a blink. Yeah, she's funny bro. too. She's a good personality. You know, she's like she's actually like, yeah, she knows what she's doing. So yeah. what's next, bro? Um, <laughs> Am I gonna pull this shit out of you, bro? Like, <laughs> well, we uh, my, some of my favorite things to do over the past few years were documentaries. Like we made a few docs. Um, or like docu series, or like kind of like a mockumentary type series. Like we we did those weight loss shows, and then we got into the documentary that was supposed to be like just a skydiving documentary, like me getting my license. And then it became this whole accident thing. And then I was like, well, if I'm gonna put out the accident, I want to control this narrative. I want to put like 
my own life story and it just so people see they're like okay i get it i understand this guy's life also that was you know the sugar-coated version that doc and you know there's things that i left out that i don't know if we'll ever see the light of day but um you don't want to make more docs i want to i have a documentary idea um i mean i don't know i, I think it will bro yeah don't uh, delete it no I mean, I have like a fucking, if I die or something, like I already spoke about this with Oscar, like make the doc, <laughs> you know, if I die, he has like what he needs to make a fucking cool ass documentary about my life and tell the real stories of things. I that pray I, that you're alive, you know, like that's, yeah, that's always a plus. Yeah. I don't think you need Thanks. to be dead for it. Thanks. Why don't you just have somebody leak it? So that way it's not you. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure we it out. They go back to this part. <laughs> but, um, so I just wrote like a concept for a doc because documentaries you kind of write in the edit and that's where you figure out like the storytelling and all that. So you, you just got to pick up the camera and start filming for a documentary. So I have this really good idea or I think it's a good idea. I think it's like something that's meaningful. It has a good message behind it. It'll make it a positive impact in the world or at least this country with, with something that's going on. And I, we're going to start shooting that soon. Barbershop season is coming back. Well, which we, we I do love it. the barbershop, bro. Thank you. It's yeah, that's so my bread and butter because that's the, the products and the brand and everything. And that's no, my but whole it's life. good. It's like a great concept, and I can't see anybody else doing it besides you. Thank you. Yeah, it's just a little tricky because not everybody needs a haircut, right? Are, yeah, not everybody needs a haircut, and podcasts, video podcasts on YouTube have now blown up, and it's not as rare as it it was when we started the barbershop. It was like a cut down because the barbershop is like a cut down podcast essentially with a haircut included. So there's a visual aspect to yeah, it. Yeah, of course it's comedy, whatever it's like, you know, improv. So it's almost like if people want a podcast, they'll watch a podcast so you could keep it on in the background as you're doing your dishes or fucking folding laundry, whatever. And if people want to watch a YouTube video or like a, a quick skit, they'll watch TikTok. So it's now like a weird in between like a lot of the TikToks that we cut out of the barbershop will do really well. Yeah. Or the, the Snapchat version of it will do really well. So I'm, I'm kind of like having to spread it out now. But barbershop, we're still we're picking it up. We're doing one a week now for the next like few months. And we'll do that seasonal because Jeff FM is now the it's become the, the bread and butter, the focus. But also the haircut and the barbershop, the brand is my life and everything. So, yeah, those two are are the big ones and um, what would you say is like your favorite endeavor thus far is it the documentaries i or? do stuff for a little bit and then i switch it up just to keep it fresh like i get really into things and i'm like fully obsessed and then i have to like switch it up to keep them fresh mm -hmm. so it was really nice when i was doing the barbershop for a little bit and then i would switch it up and do like a docu-series on like weight loss and have a bunch of funny fat guys come and we all see you could lose the most weight and that's like that was a, a series that we did. And then Jonah was a part of that, right? Or yeah, no? yeah, yeah. He was the winner. He mm -hmm. won it. He won them all. He, he won th like 50 grand in total of like the three series that I did. <laughs> but um, yeah, we did that. And then I would go back to the barbershop and I would be so excited to get back to it because yeah. I was like, I missed this, you know, and, and then I'd burn out from that. And I'd be like, oh, fuck, let's go back and do another series idea. There's no rules to this game. As a video creator, if you find something that works that your audience likes, then you're fucking blessed, you know? Yeah. You get to make what you want. Like, you just started your own podcast. I'm sure you love your freedom that you have over bro, here. Bro, it's It gave me more confidence. Mm -hmm. I feel like I am... A lot of people think I'm I'm like an employee for Impulsive, but I, I am an owner. I'm a partner. Yeah, yeah. And How much percent do you have? I can't say. Believe it or not, uh, Impulsive is not like my financial bunny, but it's just, bro, like everybody knows me from Impulsive. Of course, it put me yeah. on. I have all the opportunities. I got to be doing stand up. I got Logan literally just goes, here's everything I've ever worked for. Here, take it. And I go, oh, thank you. <laughs> like, yes. I'm not, I had a renegotiation clause at last year mm -hmm. um, around December, and my attorney called me. He goes, you ready to call? And I go, no. I go, because I feel like what I'm getting is more than what I even deserve. So I'm like, I'm grateful for it. So I don't even want to negotiate for more. Hell I'm not yeah. in it for money, bro. Like, I, I'm I'm blessed financially. I could put food on the table. Everybody here could pay their bills. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just want to create and make sure that I'm in line with God's purpose, and everything else would be taken care of. Um. Okay. Cool. Well, dude, I wanna um I wanna get into one more thing. Cool. If you could go back in time and talk to your 16 year old self right when your parents gave you the freedom to choose any decision you want to do, if you want to go to church, if you don't want to go to church, if you want to chase whatever you want to do, this is the same kid that walked away from church, is now getting into some uh, temptation, selling drugs, doing all this stuff. If you could go back and have a two-minute conversation 
what is the things that you bring to his attention to stay away from or stay closer to? Um, I mean, what would I tell my 16 year old self? Yeah, I mean, because I know there's an American Jeff out there right now, bro, in the same exact shoes that you were in, 16 years old. So I want him to hear your voice as the future self. I would probably just say, like, just keep it simple. Like, don't be scared to take the risks that you're about to take and enjoy the ride. You know, it's, <laughs> so they're gonna I'm do crime. I'm fucking sorry, but all I kept picturing is like, poof, and he like time travels, and then je- <laughs> the younger just like, what's up? And he's like, yeah, man, just like, keep it simple, bro. Uh, I'm only gonna tell you, for, uh, I know I have this moment, but I'm only here for 10 seconds. I'm then I'm dipping out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't hey, you got any shit. more weed? Real quick, I, got <laughs> I don't want to stop at the dispo. You know, I'm already here. <laughs> I mean, what can I really say? You know, I, I I wouldn't change many things except for that probably the one situation. And I would be a few things, but uh, no, like I I moved away young. I moved out of my parents' house when I was 17. And then I tried to move back in at like 17 and a half. My dad was like, nah, you're out. You're fucking done. You want to leave? You're hot shot? You're done. And, you know, and he was cool. He like let me back in. But then I moved to Miami at like 18, 19, like very Damn. young to move. I would love to see you in Miami, bro. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had, I was just there on, on like a vacation and I saw they were opening up this barbershop. It was all decked out, like the stickers covering the windows because it wasn't open yet. And it was just all these athletes and celebrities. And it was called like Hall of Fame barbershop. And I was like, this looks sick. And I want to be a part of this. This is like what I want to be doing, you know. You don't really meet people in Staten Island. There's not really a lot of opportunity. Now, fucking everybody is from there all of a sudden. Pete Davidson and the Practical Jokers. Well, he's the king, it. right? Isn't he the king of Staten Island? Uh, the, What's the uh, movie called? It's a, fic- it's a fiction movie. It's not, it's not, a, <laughs> it's not real, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's so you're the king. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd say Pete is more like the prince. I'm a little older than him. Pete's crushing you're it. older than Pete. Pete's young. Yeah, he's like 27. Fuck Pete 26. Davidson, bro. Like low key. <laughs> I hope this gets clipped. If he watches this, fuck you, bro. I'm tired of watching you depressed. Fucking every fucking top model getting paid more than anybody. What are you fucking depressed about, bro? What are you depressed about? Being the it guy? Bro, that like a girl like fucking just comes out and like, like can't wait till Pete fucks her. Like, bro, and you have a rumor you have the biggest dick. Fuck you, bro. It does? That should cure your <laughs> depression, <laughs> asshole. Holy. If you have depression and then you spontaneously have a huge dick, that's an oxymoron, bro. You can't be walking around depressed with a dick like that. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just I'm just fucking pissed at this dude. You can't. You're right. Um, yeah, look, I'm proud of Pete. He's fucking he he's it's killing it. He's, he's funny. Killing it. Yeah. He, he, His stand-up bit where he came at Ariana Grande, I was like, oh, okay. he, he, did, he did kill it. Yeah. He killed it, bro. Yeah, it. He killed it. And he did it in a tasteful way, which is... That's he's got a new show that he, he's doing in Staten Island. So uh, he, you know, he puts Staten Island on the map and he stays living there. My family still lives there. So Oh, he still lives there? Yeah, he still lives in Staten Island. I think he got a, a place in the city now, but he lived at his, mo- okay. his mother's house. He lived with his mother, or he bought, I'm sure he bought a new house and had his mother live there and... Yeah, stayed true to Staten Island. But for me, it didn't work. I needed more, so I moved, and I took a bunch of risks. And there were moments where I would stress along the way, and that's probably the only thing that I would be like, don't stress because it's all, it's all going to work out, mm. or it won't. You'll be dead, and then you, you won't You still stress know. out now, though? Yeah, of so course. So why don't you take your advice? Easier said than done. You of know? course. There's shit that just happens with people's brains, and you know every day is a new day. So like, uh, if I have a good day going, great. If then I can wake up the next day and shit's bad, and then I got to do therapy or I got to go run 20 miles or something. Are you actively my... in therapy? Yeah, I do it. I try to do it every week, but I sometimes I get busy and I have to cancel it. But I try to. Do you, have you seen um, a difference in your life since? Yeah, the... yeah, it helps. It's just good to talk. Same therapist? And... No, you didn't get a therapist, did you? I don't do therapy. I just did it like... You wow. don't do therapy? No. Wait, I thought sure. you said you did therapy. No, he no. Was. You just assumed that? <laughs> Same therapist? <laughs> the shoe fits. Why about going to therapy? Because no. uh, therapists can't relate to this, like, like this career so, like, niche. So, so and, like, dumb. Rare. Such a dumb answer so, to say. And, like, they can't They'll never no, understand they my success. No, not... not <laughs> I'm, well, I'm not I'm successful. Joking, I'm, I'm, joking. Joking. I'm just, like, they don't get it, I feel like. They can't, like, Did relate. you try? No. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Find somebody that's right for you. Or even if it's that's just about so talking. That's so awkward. Talking the fact that stranger. American Jeff is telling you to try therapy is like, bro, like, what, what the fuck did I just walk in? Like, I can't believe. Bro, if I've watched your progression of life 
and sitting here watching you mentor a Steven, like this gentleman here, mm-hmm. like it's a beautiful thing to watch you progress. You're, you've became an amazing grown man. Thank you, George. I'm you very too. proud of you. We met, and can I say where we met? Of course. Strip club. Did we? <laughs> yeah. You where? were there with your boys, and I was there with my, my boys at the time. Where, Actually, where, I was with Cody still. You was know, this Cody, in my, my friend. L.A. or Vegas? L.A. It was the I four play gentleman club for four probably somewhere like fucking <laughs> yeah. rad. The you know four many, play gentleman club. Do you know how many times Bell's like, come on, let's go to a strip club. I'm like, no, bro, we're yeah, not going to a strip club. Take me. Like, I, I just want to go and have not a going to a strip club, bro. I want to even when I was at the strip club, it was just uncomfortable, bro. Like, I don't like I know, but I just want to go, you know, then like, you go with your friends, bro. Go hang out. Just yeah, fucking yeah. Jump I want to go and have a grand old time, you know. Yeah. She was like, come on. I probably have the coolest girlfriend. Sometimes I genuinely am like, damn, like you you really need that like fucking badass dude that's like, yeah, fucking. And when we go to strippers, do fucking blow off their asses. But like, I'm just kind of like, let's stay home and read Proverbs. Who do you think I am? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. But no, back then, I don't think we were getting too crazy. I just saw you there and I remember you showed me like uh, Vine. You showed me like you, that you were doing Vine. Yeah, I, I just started. I was only on I know, for like a few I know, months. I know, no, you were excited about it. Yeah, very excited. Of course, you know, it was like, it was a new thing to the world. Nobody knew where it would go. Did you no. do social media before you got into the social nah. media realm? Me neither, bro. I didn't even know what Vine was. And then it was like, you know, I, I met Rudy and we became friends, kind of, and then he was just like, oh, let me throw you in this. And then I, I was around it for a while. And, you know, I always, I made videos when I was young, like 14. I made like YouTube videos, but they were like, want to be jackass videos you know like i would do like some stupid shit or like a street interview or something way back then i was i was doing those and i used to have to film with my laptop with the camera on the laptop no yeah i would use like the photo booth camera on my laptop i love those yeah yeah i was film like dirt bike wheelie videos like stunt videos on that with the shit. laptop yeah, Dude, I, the, I saw one of those <laughs> in the in the Facebook anniversary. Oh things. my god! Oh no! Dude. Is my Facebook still up? I gotta delete that. Dude, dude, I got my cousin. Uh, his name's Goril. G, we call him because Goril is like <laughs> <laughs> such a hard name to explain <laughs> to friends. Like, hey, his name's Goril. Goril. Yeah. Let me just start over because that sounded weird, right? Let me just <laughs> let me just we'll cut from here. I had a cousin named Goril. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said it right though, so I'm actually pretty proud of you. We'll keep it in. Uh, and he texted me. He goes, dude, it's been 12 years since Mr. Pinnacle. Now, hear me out, bro. I have a video, and I can't wait to release this one day. I, had a, I, I went to a school called Pinnacle High School, and they hated the shit out of me, bro. Probably because I was annoying, and I talked, and I just like had a lot of ambition, and people just didn't like that. And, and being in a weirdo back in the day was like, you're just a weirdo. You're not cool. Now it's cool to be a weirdo. I just missed it by a little bit. But... It was so bad, bro. They were like, so Mr. Pinnacle is like all the guys go up on this like talent show thing and everybody at the school goes. It's a very big event and it's not even during school hours. Like you have to come on a Friday or Saturday. It's it's just a really nice event and you get to do all your talent shows. You even get to walk on stage with your mom with fun music and I was involved in it and every time I was on stage, they would throw shit at me. So they would throw shoes or water bottles or like it got so bad that right before I got to perform my song that I wrote, um, my the principal came to me and she goes hey i think it's a good idea if you don't perform (laughs) like they just really don't like you and so i knew that my mom and dad and the principal were talking about me leaving that school so this was like the last time i could perform at the school and i was like i was like please all i ask is just let me perform and uh i went on stage and dude you just on camera you could just see people booing my mom's crying my dad's like just uncomfortable my best friend's trying to fight the whole crowd but you can't because it's the whole crowd yeah and uh Kave? Yeah, no Kave was laughing the whole time oh, Kave's the friend that would be like damn sense. this dude's fucking hated and he just like laughed joins in yeah <laughs> boo you suck uh and uh i went in and the first thing i said before my music started i go hey i i i, I this performance is for every one of you that boos me. Yeah. And I performed <laughs> and dude, literally as I performed at the end of it, when I hit this, and by the way, I wasn't great, but I think it was just, I had so much balls that like literally the school was kind of like, damn, like this fucking kid like doesn't give a shit. Yeah. And they gave me a standing ovation afterwards. That's impressive. And I left it. the school, bro. Never, never came back. <laughs> it was fucking cool, bro. It was like a cool moment. Yeah. That's like a fucking teen, like come of age film. And I have it on camera, bro. Yeah. How cool is that? Oh I yeah. I gotta see that. Oh, I love to show oh, it. I, I look at YouTube. it all the time when I'm sad. I go, look where you come. 
Look how far <laughs> you come. Look how they hated yeah. you. You know, it's so funny. Everybody always asks me, like, dude, you ever wish you could go back and see those, like, the teachers that played pots and pans of my music? Like, my teacher played a YouTube video of my music when it came out, and then a YouTube video of people banging pots together, and she had the class vote what sounded better. And what? everybody voted pots and pans. Damn. And by the way, Kave was in that class, and he voted pots and pans too. Like, Kave. of course, yeah, of yeah. course. So Kave's that ball breaking friend you need. Have mm -hmm. to. He's the one that like humbled me and made me realize that I ain't shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Why did I bring that up? I felt like there was a reason why I brought Mr. Pinnacle Facebook. No, no, no. The pots and pans. The the, the school. I don't know why I brought that up. I felt like there was a reason why I brought that up, but. It's your show. It is my show. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not used to talking this much. This is kind of crazy. Dude. You want to hear TikTok news? Or yes. Bell? You do? Yes, please. So Bell has this amazing segment that I'm so excited about. I love it. Um, TikTok news. TikTok news where she just gets into it. I got, I got roasted in the comment section because I don't he show appreciation me. for the TikTok news. And, all right, yeah, People feel it. like I'm bullied. I mean, we try to implement some of this stuff over on Jeff FM. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you yeah. do this? Uh, you do yeah. the weather segment. We do a bunch of shit like Which this. Which was weird, dude. The guy was on like a Zoom call and he didn't talk about weather at all. I know he's the worst weatherman ever. I, I'm looking for a new one. Yeah, I've been looking for a new guy to do the weather, but you know, it's nice. I know like- Where are you going? It's the, the next day. The <laughs> again? Tri Small bladder. You tripped on that wire. Small you have bladder, to pee again? <laughs> does, he have does he have diabetes? Probably. George. <laughs> No. I do like all the sound effect things you have actually, going on in yours. <laughs> Darchy, you. I actually do like the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I think it's so cool. Like you can add in so many effects and music. All right, that's cool. I used to do them myself, but then I was like thinking about it all the time, and I just kind of made Kaya like, like understand my brain, like what we would like to do. Like I just started saying the sound bites. There you go. Yeah. Like I just started going Kaya, and then it would be. Like, yeah, we, we, we make effects with our noise, with our mouths. It's very nice. This is how I get into bed every night. Yeah. <laughs> Did you program these? No. Uh, we never use these ever. No. Oh, okay. I just thought yeah. it would be funny to, to have yeah. them on. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Babe, get into the news. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> TikTok news. Okay. So, has Colombia finally figured out what to do with Pablo Escobar's hippos? Have you... Wonder. I don't know about this, yeah. Oh, you know about that? Let's go, okay. Because he bought so many foreign animals, it messed up the ecosystem. Yeah, okay, so these hippos are the- See, no, no, but stop. Do you see how he introduced it versus you? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to hate, and I get the comment section is going to go after me, but I have to do some adjustment. The way he just reeled me in with his, like, clickbaiting, like, he-, he Pablo Escobar ruined the ecosystem by adopting too many animals. Or still, well, like no, he now bought, he's he bought exotic animals. I'm fucking complimenting you right now. You know, just, like Mike Tyson, I bought the tiger. Now picture that on a whole nother level. Pablo Escobar made five hundred million dollars a day. He was making like a billion dollars every couple of days. Yeah, he's on zoo. Yeah, he bought all types of wild animals, and then when he died, these animals still are existing in Colombia. So they don't they don't belong there. You're not supposed to have <laughs> no. elephants and fucking rhinos and shit hippos like crazy animals that you only see it in like safaris or how something. did he die he got killed by the fbi they went out there and popped him in the head on the roof <laughs> i went to his grave i went to columbia i visited his grave <laughs> <laughs> you're serious about pablo bro yeah <laughs> is it because grave. he was your, like your hero when you were selling nah, drugs he my hero just interesting he did a lot of, he had a big impact on the world you know a lot of yeah, people huge. hate him. A lot of people love him. Wait, would you, okay, so my dad actually told me about this. He says uh, Mexican people love him because he did a lot for Mexican people. Uh -huh. So what did he do? He did that? a lot for Colombia, too. Certain cities, you know, he did a lot, but he also killed some innocent people. I don't know how many. I don't know what specifically he did, but sorry I'm eating. I didn't eat anything all day. <laughs> no, it's funny it's okay. watching you <laughs> talking about Pablo Escobar. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, well, why don't we just have her go into the news yeah, while you yeah. chew, yeah? So, <laughs> okay, so, well, this is just about, like, specifically the hippos. So these hippos are the descendants of Pablo Escobar's private herd, and the population is booming, okay? Mm. So the late crime lord <laughs> illegally imported four of the animals from African countries in the 1980s. So before his death in 1993, Escobar lived in an extravagant compound with a football pitch, nightclub, and a large zoo. A Lord Zoo with uh, exotic animals. So while authorities removed most of the animals to zoos or private collections, they left four hippos running free along the Magdal Magdal Magdalena 
River, where they thrived in Colombia's year-round wet climate. There are now an estimated 130 hippos <laughs> in the Antiquia yeah, province. And the population could grow to 400 in just eight years. Just these hippos. They started from four. Do you remember Echo? No. The Echo brand? Or yeah, it's just like a... It, it, no, it, yeah, the hippo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the rhino. Yeah. It's a rhino. rhino. Oh, it's a rhino? Oh. Oh. Well... Anyways, so last year, Colombia declared the hippos a toxic invasive species. They have no natural predators in the country, because they're not supposed to be there, and are considered a threat to the local ecosystem. So the new plan is to use food to lure the hippos into iron containers and then fly them to Mexico and India, where they will be given to zoos and sanctuaries. Damn, so imagine a bunch of predators? hippos on a plane. Like, huh? that's got to be a big-ass plane. That they don't like, eat other things. Hippos weigh thousands of pounds. Yeah, really big. Well, so they, they What's they're gonna a eat threat a because they're eating things, but yeah, What's no one's What's going to beef with a hippo? And they're like growing like crazy? Yeah. Hippos are fast too. I heard that they're really fast. And I they live 40 know. to 50 years. So. They say, they say uh, what is it? Grizzly bears? No, polar bears are the biggest um, threat, like the biggest. Did you hear what Joe Rogan said about one on his show? What? I'm going to butcher this story. I, I just, I think about it every time I hear about a polar bear. I'm going to butcher this story, but I'm going to repeat what I remember in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So please, God, if anybody knows the actual story, like, oh, he's telling a lot. I already told you. I don't know what verbatim. Yeah. But he was explaining that there was people that were, where are polar bears at? What, what, uh, it's in the polar, <laughs> but it's in the pol Arctic or whatever, but where there's a lot of ice, right? Ice. Mm -hmm. Their boat gets like caught in ice or something and they have to, or it sinks, it sinks and they have to get off of their boat and they're sitting on, um, on an ice cap thing. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And far away, I'm talking like very, very far away, they see a polar bear just pop up <laughs> and it just looks like this at them. And then from far away, they're like, wow, that's so cute. Look at that little polar bear. Where's the Coca-Cola can? You know, like they're yeah, just in their yeah, happy yeah. little days. And then it was into the water and then went halfway closer. And now they're like, all right, that's a uh, cool, better view. <laughs> fucking pretty close, but okay, cool. It's like, he's, he's trying to check us out, you know? So yeah. he's like, again, and they're like, is he coming over here? And he goes, now it's across from here to this sink. Yeah. And now they're looking at him and they're like, okay, but like obviously he's not gonna come any closer, right? Goes, dumb, comes back out, grabs one of their legs pulls them in, takes them to where they were, and rips him apart, eating him. In real life, they're just watching their friend get mold apart. Damn, that's like Cocaine Bear, the movie that just came out. Yeah. That were just like gruesome, like just bears. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't see that one coming, dude. I didn't see like, <laughs> I thought I was gonna get like a no way, like that's crazy, and then feed into this, and you were just like, kinda reminds me of uh, Cocaine Bear. <laughs> well, it's a movie I just watched last week where bears are ripping people to shreds. I watch a lot of shit about bears. I watch the show Alone, the new season Alone, where people live in the- Do you watch Little Bear? No. <laughs> Only big bears, violent, violent ones. But yeah, that's crazy. And being in that situation, think about it. Even if you have a gun on you, you could shoot that fucking bear and it won't even know. You just you anger it and then it. it'll come after yeah, you. Yeah, and then it's just like more mad. What do you do? What do you do with a bear? Like, you know how they say like act bigger, but what if you're violent. me and you're five nine? You can't act bigger than this. This is what God gave me. No, you yell at it. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, <laughs> bear. Hey, bear. <laughs> You yell at it like hey, that. Give, bear. Me, give me an impression right now. Steven, get up and pretend you're a bear about to mold. We did this before. We've no, actually done this exact thing. Okay, done well, this role play? Yeah. By okay, go. And, yeah. and, okay, really get into character first. Okay. Yeah, just right here. And I'm going to give you an action. And then you are Jeff FM. Yeah. Okay. So, so. And do you feel like the character? Do you feel like the character? Yeah, let's just break down some rules here. No kicking or punching. Right. What? Um, well, I mean, this is an acting experience. How am I going to defend myself against the bear? Just really feel what a bear would do. And action. When, what's the concept? <laughs> <laughs> you're a bear okay. and you're hungry. I'm hungry. Okay, everyone back on set. One and action. <laughs> the up kick was coming. The up kick was coming right to his chin. Okay, okay, reset. And, no, and, I don't and want don't, to do this bit. And, and, and don't. And this time, don't be a shitty actor. Okay. And action. <laughs> no, 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 no. Get back, get back. <laughs> cut, cut. Not horny. Not horny. No, no, no. That's enough, that's enough. Why are you thrusting so much? <laughs> <bro>? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was really good, Stephen. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Was, that was a good job on your part. Do you, wait, do you think 
Animals get horny, or do they just have sex just because they have to? I don't like the way you say horny, especially in my ears okay. like that. Do 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 animals get horny? Well, have you, have you horny? Think about yeah. it. Have you ever do bears have sex? Have you, have you ever seen a bear have sex? No, Stephen. Exactly. I've, ne I've never watched. Sex. Not in real life, but they have to have sex. How do you think they populate? I don't know. I think I just it's just don't like think their animals instinct. get horny. Like they just no, no, that's they, not true. Seahorses they just have to repopulate. They don't have like emotions to. Do get. Oh, it, uh, what's this thing that the dog humping? This thing. What? Uh, it's a penguin. In the a penguin. Penguin. Thank you. And uh, a penguin. Don't they fuck for fun? Penguins fuck for fun. Oh yeah, there's really? some an animal. I don't know if it's penguin. But that's yeah. why, that's why the movie Happy Feet. Fun. They're all excited because they're all nutting. They're like, oh. yeah. Just, I'm sorry. I might too sure. much. <laughs> Penguins do have sex? Penguins. That's what you look up out of all the questions? <laughs> well, I mean, that was obvious. Never seen well, of course have bears have sex. How have they ever seen them have sex? Do you think they do it bare naked? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> <laughs> See, on pretty, Impulsive, I would have got kicked off for no, that. No, that was... <laughs> that was, that was, that was yeah. <laughs> God, I love this episode. Oh, Could you guys come back more often, yeah, please? Yeah, whenever, whenever. Let's just do it once a week. We'll just uh, all come. I would love that. Please bring Steven back. All right. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for this episode. Like, with all of my heart, I really do love you guys as close friends. And if you guys ever need me, I'm always there for you. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. I know I could count on you. You're a real one. I appreciate and it. And this was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. You were great. I love TikTok news. Such a pleasure. Thank you Do you, you so have much. any other TikTok news? or should I just, do. Should, do but you want to hear one more TikTok news or just wrap it up here? I have to go record myself something right now. Yeah, see, told you, babe, it's, you got to come harder and next time. I, no, that was I like solid. That. Like, you I got really, me going oh, with that it. Pablo one. Yeah, that why? We got I mean, not even, but yeah, like. Tension, yeah. Columbia, rhinos. Hippos. Hippos, hippos. Thanks for watching, Rhino, guys. Echo. Make sure <laughs> you like and subscribe. Stuff. They loved it. And uh, come back for more. We post every Thursday, every week. And uh, don't forget to sign up to our Patreon, because that's when shit really gets kind of crazy. That's where the rest of the TikTok news is going on Patreon. That's <laughs> right, baby. <laughs> yeah, sign up if you want it. All right, All right thank job, you guys, guys so much. We'll be out. Bye-bye.